There are many things we do want, and many things that we definitely don't want for the PlayStation 5, so in today's video, we're going to take a look at the things that we don't want with the PS5. Here we go, back at it again with yet another video. G'day guys, I'm Champ Chong, and if you guys end up enjoying today's video, make sure you smack that like button real good. Also, in the comments down below, let me know what you don't want to see with the PlayStation 5. And speaking of that, we're going to take a look at the five things I want to not see with the PlayStation 5, and let's begin with the first thing, and that's the system going completely digital. I don't want to see the PlayStation 5 be an all digital console, because because honestly, that would just really, really, really suck. If you don't know, I live in Australia and well, Australia is known for, well, spiders, kangaroos and shit internet. Seriously, we have the worst internet in the world. Even countries like countries that don't exist have better internet than us. But that doesn't even just go for us. It goes for a lot of people around the world, except for the Koreans and the Swedes. They have just amazing internet. But people even in rural parts of America in the Midwest just have awful, awful internet. So if the PlayStation 5, like it's been rumored by some people, goes all digital, that'll, that'll just be a really, really bad decision by Sony. Hopefully though, we don't see it go all digital. I don't personally think it will, but it will be more emphasized to go all digital Personally, I do download a lot of my games these days, but at the same time, I still like having a physical copy and I'm pretty sure you guys do too. But anyway, now moving on to number four on this list. And by the way, this isn't in any particular order, but number four is the lack of backwards compatibility. It seems that I guess the longer the generations go on, the more they just decide, hey, we're not gonna give you backwards compatibility until a later date so that you have to still keep your old console and it's just a bit of a mess, especially in that transitional period of of having a console since a lot of people do trade in their older systems for the new one and then you don't have backwards compatibility but you want to go back and play some of the amazing games from that generation. And also if you do look at it from a digital standpoint why can't we just re-download the games that we downloaded digitally on the previous generation and then just have them on the next generation. It just makes sense. And on top of that if you do look at the PlayStation 4 Pro it was sort of an upgrade a mid-generation leap over the PlayStation 4. So you've got the PS4 Pro, which can play PS4 games and vice versa, and they're all just working together. It's more of a software upgrade, really. So essentially, you'd have the PS5, similar to how the PS4 Pro was an upgrade to the PlayStation 4, and then you'd be able to just continue that backwards compatibility over to the next generation. Hopefully you guys understand what I mean, but hopefully we don't see the lack of backwards compatibility with the PlayStation 5. Now, moving on to to number three on this list, and it's something very, very important to me, and I'm pretty sure you guys too, and that is anything less than 60 FPS. If we get anything less than 60 FPS, I'm going to be pretty sad. 60 frames per second should be the absolute minimum for all games on next generation. That goes to the PlayStation 5 and whatever the next Xbox is, and that should just be set like that. Nothing should be sub 60. Now you can argue that some games on this generation with the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 4 Pro look amazing even under 60 FPS at like 30 FPS and stuff, but that's the thing. Only the games that are cinematic do look good that way but even then once they are pumped up to 60 and they're still cinematic and beautiful as they are they look so damn crisp and just beautiful really now that is the thing we need 60 fps to be a minimum on the playstation 5. ideally for me i'd love to see it 4k 60 fps be the minimum overall on the playstation 5 but um, we, we can't get our hopes up, really. It's just, this might not happen. We don't know what will happen, really. But yeah, what we do know is that we want the smoothest gameplay and we don't want anything under 60 FPS. I'm gonna repeat it a million times, but I don't have time for that. What we do have time for, though, is our next thing on the list at number two. And that is a rushed console. We really don't want a rushed console. That is one of the things I am going to get so upset about if Sony just goes and just rushes this console out the door in the next year or two. I personally don't think that we need a new console right now. As exciting and as like breathtaking as the games will look, 
I, I just don't necessarily think that we need it right now. We just got the PS4 Pro a couple of years ago, and that's been just enough of an upgrade. And I know a lot of people upgrading already, and they they might get more and more angry as a fan base if you decide to just hey hey guys, uh, we 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 have a new console for you. It's the PS5. So please don't upgrade your consoles every two years, Sony. We don't need a rushed console out the door. And speaking of out the door, I'm going to throw my PlayStation 5 out the door, out the window, whatever it is. I'm gonna go throw it out of here, out of my living room in number one, and that is that if the PlayStation 5 ends up sounding like a fighter jet flying through my living room when I'm trying to play a game that looks real crisp, well, uh, I'm gonna be really, really upset. Seriously, this is actually my number one thing right here. I know it may seem petty, but I don't want the PlayStation 5 to sound just insanely loud in my living room like the PS4 Pro does. Seriously, I don't know what it is with the PS4 Pro. I don't know what it is with uh, just the regular PlayStation 4 console, but they're pretty damn loud consoles compared to the back in the PS3 era. When you're trying to play God of War and you've got it pumping at 4K or even Spider-Man or even Red Dead, those games, those really intensive games on the system, they, the games just make the system go into overdrive, and I'm really hoping that they sort that out with the next generation and the PS4 isn't super loud. Seriously, if it ends up sounding anything like my old Xbox 360 from back in the day, uh, I, I'm, I'm probably just gonna lose my mind. It's really just one of those things that take you out of the experience, out of the immersiveness of the game, and it ends up kind of ruining it all. But hopefully they don't make a super loud console and hopefully they don't do all the things I said on this list. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know again what you guys don't want to see with the PlayStation 5. And uh, I might even do a what we do want to see video. I'm not sure. But anyway, guys, I will see you in the next one. If you enjoyed this one, please smack the like button. And uh, yeah, bye-bye.